Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing three pieces of very cool news. The first of which is Polaris 20, which has actually been confirmed. We'll go into that in just a second, though. Then we're going to go through the recent Ryzen community update, because AMD have put out a couple of bug fixes, as well as perhaps a few other bits of information that you might well find very helpful if you have a Ryzen CPU. And then we're going to finish things off with, of course, the Titan XP, because yet more benchmarks have emerged onto the internet, as well as a bit of a teardown. So we'll go into that in just a moment. But... First things first, the Polaris 20. This has been one of those rumours which hadn't seemed to die, but had somewhat fizzled out. It's a bit like, oh, I don't know, Vega 11. We kind of know it was a thing, but there's been no evidence to tell us what it was. Well, in this case, Polaris 20 had been hinted at for some time. And what is it? Well, Polaris 20, we already know what it is, actually. We just didn't know what it was called Polaris 20, and that is the RX 500 series. Specifically, a couple of images have popped up onto the internet. Perhaps the most telling of all is a GPU-Z screenshot, which is 1.18.0 for the GPU-Z version. Now, there are some definitely some things missing in this, including, for example, the number of TMUs in pixel fill rate and texture fill rate and other bits and bobs. But one can clearly ascertain it is Polaris 20 right there with a release date of 2017. And, well... That's pretty much all there is to write about that. I mean, I'm not surprised now that we know about it because it makes an awful lot of sense. I mean, really, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense for Polaris 20 to be anything else in, like, later part of the year because we're assuming that feature, uh, future GPUs from AMD are going to be shifting towards Vega. At least that's the assumption. I say this with uh, ignorance on the subject because no one knows, really, apart from the folks working at AMD at the moment. But there is also something else which is quite evident, and that is the fact that we are looking at a different revision, which is E7. Now, the reason that's interesting is because it ties in rather nicely to the default clock, which is 1450. So, depending on the variant that you are going for, um, you know, with the RX 480, you're going to be looking at between 10, 15, maybe 20% if you're very lucky. I mean, after all, we can probably assume that the RX 580 is going to also clock fairly well, given what we know about the additional two pins for the power. So it's looking quite interesting. It's basically, from what we can see, a bit like Hawaii to Granada. Um, I, I guess the best way to describe it if you want an even more simple way, is it's like the, the 200 series to the RX, uh, sorry, to the 300 series. So in other words, it's a slight shift, higher clocks, probably better quality silicon, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to set the world alight. But with that said, it is definitely a nice increase in performance. And also videocards.com have grabbed a couple of um, driver revisions. And it's pretty obvious that we have Polaris XTX and that is the Polaris, uh, sorry, the RX 580, and then the Polaris 20 XL is the uh, 570. So once again, perhaps the most interesting thing about this is at least we know what Polaris 20 is at this point. I also want to go through with you a quick community update from Ryzen, or rather on Ryzen. It, Ryzen didn't, you know, suddenly become self-aware and start typing this out itself. Instead, Robert Halleck from AMD, who we've had a couple of interviews with previously, has decided to pop this up onto the internet and provide us a little more information. So, I'll let you read this out yourself. You could check out the video description, but there are a couple of very important things here that we can learn. First of all, for folks who care about power consumption, AMD have put out a new Ryzen balanced power plan. So what this basically does is it takes the good things about the balanced power plan, uh, which is of course, you know, the default in Windows, which obviously aims to reduce power consumption on your desktop by lowering clock speeds or shutting off whatever it can, but also doing so in a way which is not negative which doesn't negatively impact the Ryzen architecture. In this case, one of the problems with, um, well, you know, the default power plan is that you have situations where it doesn't um, handle the very quick 
minute millisecond changes in the Ryzen architecture, which it, which which it, excuse me, rapidly executes. So, for example, the P uh, state as a frequency and voltage control constantly are changed throughout the processor. So, what this um, has the negative impact of basically getting less performance, particularly when one considers that this is combined with well core parking. So in other words, what happens there is that all logical processors are parked when they don't have enough work to do. So what happens there is that if you have a parked CPU, which then has to, I suppose the, the non-technical word is spin back up to start, to start being ready for use, then you have latency. And obviously, if you have, for example, CCX1, which is being used and CCX2 hasn't been used for a while, especially if you've got data suddenly, you know, dormant in CCX2, it can, it basically, it's not ideal. So what I'd suggest is if you do insist on not having the high performance setting, then by all means, just download the new Ryzen power plan and then simply install it. Another quickie, yes, that's right, another quickie, is that AMD have released an update for Ryzen Master, or more specifically, it will release the update on Ryzen Master in just a few days, April 11th. This is going to have a few small changes. The first is a change in how it uh, reports the temperature. It now reports the junction temperature rather than C, sorry, TCTL, and this should be more accurate. And also, the installer will no longer enable or uh, require HPET, um, with Ryzen Master. So that's obviously another good thing. Now, finally, let's discuss further benchmarks of the Titan XP and also some overclocking results. So it's running at about 1900 megahertz, 1898 if you want me to be precise. And that puts out relatively nice performance indeed. You're looking at just over 8000 points in Fire Strike Ultra. Um, if we were to discuss, let's say, 3D Mark 11, that's just over 15,000 points, which is not too bad at all, with a graphics score of just a shade under 15,000. And this is obviously a pattern which continues. Also, Furmark, which is very interesting indeed, because it is incredibly punishing to GPUs, and it's also a very old uh, one as well. Furmark and MSI Combustor Torture Tests, well, they basically absolutely ravaged GPUs, and in this case, the GPU downclocked itself to just 1645 megahertz, which means that it's running under operating temperature of about 75 meg, uh, sorry, 75 C. Now, obviously, the critical temperature, the temperature it doesn't really want to reach, is about 85, 86 degrees, and the stock cooler on these cards isn't bad, it's not awful at all, but obviously it pales in comparison to, let's say, I know the gaming X's from MSI or the Amped Extremes from Zotac, that type of thing. So obviously, when AIBs start putting out their own cards, which we can presume they might, then we'll, providing NVIDIA of course actually let them, which is a completely separate discussion. And finally, we'll quickly go through a Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark. I say quickly because it's not exactly useful, to be honest. From what I can gather, it's running at just 1080p, which scores it 94 frames a second, which, to be honest, is a smidgen low. Um, but uh, obviously, it probably depends somewhat on the GPU itself. I'm sorry, on the CPU this is paired with itself. And then, obviously, finally, we have a couple of teared out images as well. And I know people are still giving this card a lot of stick, and honestly, it's one of those GPUs I personally wouldn't buy. But, you know, if it's your thing, if you like it, well, by all means, buy, you know, buy one, buy two. It doesn't impact me at all. Um, I think for most users, obviously, the, the 1080 Ti is the better purchase. But, once again, this is about 10% faster. So, you know, if you do absolutely insist on the very best and you've got money for it, well, the Titan XP is a very lovely looking card indeed. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.